Alright guys, so we are in the cub nursery at the moment with Matt Hunt, who is CEO for Free the Bears. So Matt, welcome. And can you tell us a little bit about Free the Bears as an organisation? Yeah, the organisation was set up by Mary Hutton in 1993, initially as a petition group to campaign against the use of bears in bar farms in China. Then in 1995 it became a fund when people started giving donations and we've been working here in Cambodia since 97 and now work in uh, six different countries throughout Asia. Awesome and can you tell us some of the challenges that these bears face across Asia? There are different challenges in every country really where we work. There are common themes of eagle hunting and habitat loss but you've got the dancing bear trade in India restaurant trade and pet trade in Cambodia, farming in Vietnam. So in every different country there's actually different issues that the bears are facing, but common themes throughout. And what are some of the milestones or some of the successes that Free the Bears has had? I think probably the biggest success will be the, the last dancing bear coming in from the streets of India uh, in December last year, in 2009. Um, that was pretty amazing, you know, almost 700 bears rescued in seven years and bring in a trade completely to the end. Other milestones, you know, they're, they're harder to quantify, but, you know, in Cambodia, we've managed to prevent bile farming from ever becoming established because we've been working here for 13 years. So there's no actual date that we can pin to that, but it is a success that we're proud of. Um, and then, yeah, of course, every, every bear that's rescued here is a, a bit of a milestone. And what about some of the really cool bear stories that um, kind of really stick in your mind, really special bears that, that for you really stick in your mind? They're, they're all, I mean, it, it sounds silly, but they, they are all special. But yeah, there's certainly some that stick in your mind. We've had some with terrible injuries that have come in, um, particularly snare wounds here in Cambodia. Um, and it's quite amazing when you see bears that arrive basically on death's door with half of their legs chopped off and terrible injuries and to see them not only bouncing back health wise but psychologically and learning to trust people again is uh, really quite impressive. Yeah. And so for the future of Free the Bears, where can, what can you see for the future? What, sort of what do I see for the future? Yeah. Um, I don't know, I don't think we're going to be uh, yeah. packing up and going home anytime soon. Every bear that we have represents a lifetime obligation of care so even though the last dancing bears have been rescued we've still got to provide for those bears in the sanctuaries for the next 20 or 30 years every time we have a cub arrive in southeast asia that represents potentially another 30 years worth of um, investment to take care of those animals so for the future i think we're going to be ramping up a lot on our education work to try and slow down the number of bears that are coming in get more involved in protection of wild bear habitat and hopefully start releasing some bears back into the wild if we can find safe areas of forest for them. Fantastic. And what can people at home do to help this cause? Um, well, I mean, the, the whole fund is run mainly through volunteers and uh, by people sponsoring our bears. So if they go to our website, freethebears.org, they can sponsor the bears and, um, of course, come over and volunteer here in the sanctuaries or join one of our eco-tours. There's a whole heap of ways that people can get involved. So. That's kind of the beauty of the organisation is that it is really supported by so many different people. Awesome, so jump online guys and you can help free the bears as well. Thanks very much Matt. Yeah, thanks very much.